Hi, Steve Stawning with another Steve Stawning short and sweet video training session. Today's lesson, leading an appointment culture. Now this is a follow-up to our earlier session called creating an appointment culture. So if you're an owner or a general manager and you watched creating appointment culture and you've tried to implement an appointment culture in your dealership or small business, you know that the foundation's been laid, but you also understand that there's a problem. See, how can we make sure that our managers build upon it? How can you make sure that your managers, say, dust off the training materials, right? That they actually incorporate the things that they learned in creating an appointment culture into the way that they do business for your dealership or small business, right? How can you reinforce an appointment culture? See, this is a cultural change, especially for car dealers. We've lived off ups for years, and now we need to live off appointments. And that creates, an, that requires rather, a complete change in culture in the way that we do business. Now, how can you reinforce that? How can you ensure that all of your managers are on board? See, some of your managers will say they're on board and they're not, and we'll get to that in just a second. See, how can you drive a belief in activity and accountability? We've lived off results forever. We've lived off not holding people accountable forever, especially in the car business. So how can you drive this belief that activities matter more than results? Remember, in creating an appointment culture, if you drive the activities, the results will come. And it's all about accountability. How can you drive that belief? And finally, how can you make sure that your managers are going to execute even when you're not there? That's the critical part. Now, your team's going to determine their own future. We talked about that, right? You're, you're, if you're a car dealer, you close your traditional ups at 20%. But if you follow the perfect appointment, the perfect appointment that we taught in creating an appointment culture, you know that you can close your VIP appointments at 80% month in, month out. But it's up to you. Every step you allow your team to cheat, shortcut, or shortchange makes your VIP feel more like a traditional up. See, it's all up to you and it's all up to your team, but more importantly, it's up to your managers. We taught you in creating an appointment culture that managers matter. Middle managers are the key. Unfortunately, most middle managers don't like work. See, most middle managers, they don't like change, right? And here's the biggest problem. A lot of your middle managers are passive aggressive. That means they're gonna tell you to your face, hey boss, I'm on board. But in their head, they're saying, but you know, <laughs> you know in your heart, boss, I'm gonna try and sabotage this. See, there are lots of pitfalls and roadblocks to trying to change a culture within any business, but especially a car dealership. Now, for creating an appointment culture, middle managers are critical. They're the key. So we talked about the passive-aggressive middle manager. That's the one that you need to watch out for the most. But there are other pitfalls and roadblocks that can derail your appointment culture before it even gets started. One is the mom versus dad scenario. Now, if you're married with kids, you know what I'm talking about. Dad says, uh, you can't do something, so the kids run to mom and ask her, and she says yes. And sometimes it's the other way. Mom says no, dad says yes. You can't allow this to happen in your business. See, everybody needs to sing from the same hymnal. If you have rules and you want to put those rules into place, then everyone needs to enforce them. You can't have one soft-hearted manager thinking he's doing the right thing when we all know tough love is what your team needs. Another problem that you need to watch out for is something called falsification shortcuts and freelancing. See, if you have a CRM tool and you try to manage strictly from the CRM tool and you don't manage the activities in reality, you don't manage them in real life, see, your team can create fake activities in the CRM. They can click to make fake appointments. They can click to say that they made phone calls that they didn't really make. See, they can take shortcuts around the processes that you created, but more importantly, they might try to freelance. They might say, you know, this is a good talk track, but I think I can change it, make it better, make it sound more personal. See, the problem is, if you're going to have a true culture change within your dealership, if you're going to truly try to lead an appointment culture, people have to do the process your way. Now, once they're successful with your process and they want to suggest changes to that process, then great, but we're going to change the process for everyone. See, we can't allow freelancing or that will destroy all the processes. Another pitfall or roadblock you need to watch out for are your prima donnas. These are sometimes your top salesperson, but not always. Most of the time, they're your B-plus salespeople. And these folks think they have all the answers. And so what they'll try to do is they'll try to derail your appointment culture. They'll po try to poison it by filling the heads of other salespeople with all sorts of negative talk. What you need to watch out for are these prima donnas. You can't allow this to happen. 
Now, I've never worked for or worked with any business that didn't lose their top salesperson and wasn't better off for it after that person left. Because a lot of times we find out that person was a prima donna. Or this happens in car dealers all the time. After the prima donna leaves, the sales team will go to the sales desk and tell the sales manager, God, we're so glad that asshole's gone. Oh my gosh. And the team sells more. It happens all the time. And finally, the last pitfall roadblock I want you to watch out for is something we call the powerless champion. See, if you're the owner of the business, you can try to drive this appointment culture. And this is certainly a top-down proposition here. You have got to drive this from the top down. However, you also need a champion in the dealership, someone who's going to be there all the time, someone in your business who you can say, okay, this is the person that's going to drive it when I'm not there. You have to watch out and make sure that this person has plenty of power. So you can't name a clerk or your internet manager your champion of your appointment culture because if they don't have the power to hire and fire people, if they don't have the power to reinforce processes, if they don't have the power to hold people accountable, then they're not going to do you any good. And it's not any good for your business to name a powerless champion. Happens all the time in automotive. If you've done that, you need to go back and make the change again. Now remember this, any time that someone veers off course just a little bit in your efforts to drive an appointment culture, you need to make course corrections early and often. See, you can't just let these things sit. Remember this, a rotting fish doesn't smell any better tomorrow. Let's solve the problem today. And the final thing on pitfalls and roadblocks is most of these roadblocks are just band-aids. Your team thinks they're pacemakers. They think if they rip out this roadblock, they're gonna kill the patient, right? Like ripping the pacemaker out of some guy's chest. That's not the case. These are band-aids, pull them off. You'll be happy you did.